Live Fit Podcast, Episode 58, Introducing Wednesdays with Will. What is chiropractic? I still truly enjoy stimulating the natural, innate healing capacities of the human body, and that's what I do as a chiropractor. In any case, my job is to find and correct that spinal misalignment, ultimately to restore full function to the nervous system and therefore the body's innate ability to heal itself. I do not heal anyone. And for sure, Advil and Vicodin and Flexeril, those things certainly don't heal anyone. In fact, I might say those things in many respects interfere with the ability to heal. My job is to find out why a person isn't healing him or herself, fix that, and then they should. You're listening to the Live Fit Podcast with Glenn Johnson. Here, we'll talk about all things related to good health, fitness, food, fat loss, and the mind-body connection. Ah, yes, it is time once again for the Lift Fit Podcast. Thank you for listening. I am your host, Glenn Johnson, and this is episode 58. I am really very excited about this episode today. One is because I haven't done an episode in quite a while, and I really love doing these. This is my passion. I love doing it. Everything about it from the preparation to the recording to the editing and then the really awesome feeling I get when I ship it on out to the interweb. One reason I haven't put out an episode sooner is because I am really busy doing a complete website overhaul. So livefitlean.com is going to look totally different by December 1st. That's my due date, December 1st. But I'm really excited about today's episode because I have three new things I want to share with you. The first is this series that I'm introducing today called Wednesdays with Will. The second is a new way for you to reach me. And the third is a new way for you to show your support for this podcast. Okay, first off, today is the first in a series I'm doing with Dr. Will Harden. He is a chiropractor, creator of the famous Dr. Will Bars, and has an infectious passion for health and fitness. I'm telling you, just talking with this guy gets me fired up. In this first episode of the series, Dr. Harden will tell us why he became a chiropractor, what chiropractic really is, and what it is not. Believe it or not, there's a lot of misconceptions about the practice of chiropractic. Will is the greatest. I love talking to him. He gets me so fired up about health and fitness and wellness that I just love being around him. I will continue to bring you my regular episodes on Mondays with interviews of notable experts and solo shows when I have some compelling content to share with you. But from now until we run out of material, Dr. Will and I will be bringing you a Wednesdays with Will every single Wednesday. My second announcement is I'm now using a web tool called SpeakPipe. This will allow you to leave a voice message for myself or Dr. Will. If you have a question that you would like on, answered on the show, just leave us this voicemail and we will put your voice and your question on the air. However, if you don't want it on the air, just say so and we won't do it. And finally, I'm now using a service called Patron. This will allow you, the consumer of my content, to donate according to the value you are receiving from my shows. I like to recommend a dollar an episode. I've been doing this with uh, several other podcasts that I've been listening to for years, such as Hardcore History with Dan Carlin. And I think it's a really great way. It keeps him from having to put commercials on his show, but it makes me feel good that I'm actually helping to contribute to his expenses for putting on this really great podcast. So I want to bring this opportunity to you. It doesn't have to be a dollar. You choose however much you're able to give and how valuable you feel this program is for you. If you want to set up a contribution, you can go directly to my patron page at livefitlean.com slash patron, or you can find a link on the right sidebar of livefitlean.com. Now let's get on with the first episode of Wednesdays with Will. My name is Dr. Will Harden. I'm a doctor of chiropractic. I've been practicing for 26 years. I went to undergrad in Ohio where I got a degree in psychology while fulfilling pre-med requirements. 
went to National College of Chiropractic in Chicago, graduated in 1989, moved to Oregon, have been practicing here since then. What can I tell you about without bragging? You know, accolades, etc. but I, I graduated number one in my class, not because I was in any way competitive, but because I was really and truly in love with the material that I was studying, and I could not get enough. There was nothing more fascinating than the study of the human body. And the truth is, after 26 years of practice, I still feel this way. I still truly enjoy stimulating the natural, innate healing capacities of the human body, and that's what I do as a chiropractor. So what is chiropractic? Well, literally, chiropractic means to practice with the hands. But that really doesn't tell you a whole lot. That doesn't mean that I rub people, that I massage, that I point a finger at you or touch you with my hands. Really, when it comes down to it, chiropractic is the application of force using my hands to stimulate improvement in the alignment and the motion of the human spine. Why is that important? Well, here's a here's a, a one-minute summary of how important it is to maintain good alignment of the spine. You have a stack of 25 independently movable vertebrae in your spinal column, and those bones are there not simply to hold you up. They're also there to protect and surround the spinal cord and the roots of the nerves, 25 pairs of nerves, 25 on the right, 25 on the left. Those nerves go to and control your arms, legs, heart, lungs, liver, stomach, spleen, intestines, kidneys, immune system, hormonal system. Everything works by way of the control of the nervous system. We know that when a vertebra shifts out of alignment, that it disturbs the nerve root at that level. By disturb, I do not mean it pinches the nerve. I don't mean a kink in the hose, just a little compression. But in 1975 at the University of Colorado School of Medicine, it was demonstrated that the weight of a dime on a nerve root reduces the impulses along that nerve by 40% after three minutes, by 50% after 15 minutes, and that it does not adapt over time and then start working again. If that amount of mild compression remains, so does the reduction in the nerve impulses along that nerve. My job as a chiropractor, since we know that a vertebral misalignment can put way more pressure on a nerve root than that, even without causing back pain, that's critical, even without causing back pain, because most people say, I don't need a chiropractor, I don't have back pain. In any case, my job is to find and correct that spinal misalignment, ultimately to restore full function to the nervous system and therefore the body's innate ability to heal itself. I do not heal anyone. And for sure, Advil and Vicodin and Flexeril, those things certainly don't heal anyone. In fact, I might say those things in many respects interfere with the ability to heal. My job is to find out why a person isn't healing him or herself, fix that, and then they should. And as it turns out, the side effect of that is most people feel better after they are adjusted. So that's what a chiropractor does, applies a very specific, precise force to the spine at a level where there is misalignment or improper motion to restore that alignment, to improve the motion, and thereby to improve the body's ability to heal itself. In reality, if you, if you asked, so is that what you do? You just adjust spines? Well, that's the majority. That's, the, that's probably the, the thing of primary importance that I do. But that alone is useless if a person is completely dehydrated, doesn't get enough sleep, has ridiculous stress, never exercises, and has a diet that's horrific. Therefore, as a chiropractor, based on my training, schooling, experience, I also talk to patients about sleep position, adequate quantity of sleep, stress reduction, proper exercise, give patients specific rehabilitative exercises when appropriate. 
we talk about diet and nutrition, and I place a heavy emphasis on nutrition. It's just such a critical aspect of your well-being. If you don't have the building blocks to to maintain adequate immune function, regulate inflammation, control blood sugar, then you will never be capable of maintaining optimal health, even if you do have a perfect spine. Therefore, those aspects of one's health are really a critical part of being a, a chiropractor. That's probably the most concise summary of what it is that I do as a chiropractor that I can offer you. Wow. Thanks, Will. That really helps. It's, there's really a lot to it. But I know there's a lot of misconceptions about what chiropractic is, but they also tend to think it's something that it's not. Can you tell us what chiropractic is not? What chiropractic is not? One, I am not a back pain reliever. If my only goal was to relieve back pain, I promise you could do that if you took enough Advil. The goal is to restore good health to the spine to ultimately stimulate normal neurological function. And when we do that, your back should not hurt. So the truth is, chiropractic has been kind of boxed in to being thought of as a practitioner that you see if you have back pain or neck pain or headaches. And yet the myriad of things that I see get better with chiropractic often include things that have nothing to do with back pain or in patients who don't even have back pain. There was something that I, that I previously mentioned that's war, that, that warrants attention. I said that we know that a misaligned vertebra can put way more pressure on a nerve root than the weight of a dime and that that may, may not be associated with back pain. Bear in mind, the cause of your and my misalignment, it's lifting and bending and twisting and prolonged sitting and sitting in front of a computer's and the postural implications that come along with that. It's previous injury, repetitive injury, athletic endeavors, our hobbies, our recreational and vocational activities that we do the same way day in and day out, and it creates patterns in our positioning and our motions that lead to misalignment. The truth is, it's gravity acting on our bipedalism, right? We're the only two-footed animal. And it's that two-footedness that causes a constant compressional stress on the system. And we have to fight that gravity to keep ourselves from falling. And how we fight that gravity determines to what extent we develop misalignment. So the truth is, out of 10 people walking through my parking lot, if I pulled them all into my office and checked their spines, I could readily, on every one of those people, push on an area at which point they'd say, ow, that's really sore, I didn't even know it. And I'd say, yes, you're rotated there or you're shifted out of alignment there. And that's another reason why I say chiropractic is not simply about treating back pain because the misalignment which can adversely affect the function of the body may not be associated with pain. For example, if you have a misalignment at T4 or T5 right between your shoulder blades, we know the nerves there go to the stomach and esophagus and might cause heartburn, but no pain between your shoulder blades. We know that if C2, the second neck vertebra from the top, is rotated, that may be associated with sinus problems. C1, headaches, visual disturbances, irritability, or insomnia, but not necessarily neck pain. And often when people come in due to, let's say, low back pain, when we find and address those other things, they'll say, by the way, my heartburn cleared up, my headaches are better, my sinuses are clearer. Is that possible? Of course it's possible. In fact, it's downright expected. I think that's everything you might have asked. Sounds like we have a lot of information, potential topics for future shows. Uh, one question I wanted to ask, Will, is what is the most common misconception people come in to see you or maybe don't yet come in to see you about chiropractors or about what you do? Wow, what a great question. Indulge me. There really are two things that are misconceptions about chiropractic. One, some people say, oh, you better not see a chiropractor. Once you go, you have to keep going. Your body will become addicted to it. 
really the question is, how much would I have to adjust you before you would become hypermobile? That means I would stretch ligaments so much that they would lose their elasticity and strength, and you would readily and even spontaneously go out of alignment if you cough or sneeze or turn your head while checking your blind spot. In the 60s and 70s, due to a prevalence of that question, there were studies done, primate models, to find out how much would you have to be adjusted in order to create hypermobility, i.e. dependence. And the answer is twice a day, every day, for 180 days, and then you would become hypermobile. I jokingly tell people I hardly ever recommend that treatment plan. <laughs> the other misconception, no confusion, that people have is they say, you know those chiropractors, they just want you to keep coming back. Remember, I said that we know that the vertebral misalignment disturbs normal nerve function and that that misalignment is caused by lifting, bending, twisting, postural strain. In other words, life. So my response to the statement, ah, oh, you know those chiropractors, they just want you to keep coming back is, yes, that is absolutely true. We do. It doesn't mean with a specific degree of regularity. It doesn't mean once a week for the rest of your life. It means anything less than a lifetime is not enough. And generally, that is considered appropriate at a once a month frequency. And for some people, maybe once every couple months. That is to say, usually a month's worth of lifting, bending, twisting, sitting at the computer, emails, texts, backpacks, and sporting activities, past history, is more than enough to misalign you and I. Enough that when I palpate a spine, I can readily find areas that are misaligned and that correlate either with symptoms or tenderness or pain. Wow, that's amazing. Great stuff, Will. I really appreciate you sharing this with us. Every time I hear it, I'm, I'm still amazed at how much benefit chiropractic can really have on the functioning systems of the body and not just the bones and the joints or the directly related muscles either. It's, it's really amazing. Now I'd like to move into a portion of the show where you answer a listener's question. And I'm going to choose this one based on something you said earlier about uh, you talk with people about sleeping positions. I have one here from Courtney from Santa Clarita, California. It says, Will, my back aches in the night and I change positions frequently. What is the best position for sleeping? It's amazing how commonly I'm asked that question. And the answer is the ideal sleep position, the most neutral spine position is on your side, legs bent, thin pillow between your bent knees, big fat pillow in front of you that you are essentially cuddling to do something with that top shoulder so as not to fold it down in front of the chest, which over time could essentially shorten the pectoralis muscles or the chest muscles and then a small to moderate thickness pillow stuffed down to the shoulder supporting the head and neck ultimately trying to create a straight line between your neck and your upper back the next most desirable sleep position would be flat on the back with a pillow supporting the neck but with your knees bent and that's difficult to maintain throughout the night because when you shift, generally you're going to kick out whatever was underneath your knees. But ideally, whatever's under your knees would be the equivalent of two or three pillows, a rolled up sleeping bag, a rolled up comforter with a pillow on it, etc. And you'll notice a distinct difference between laying flat on the back with the legs out and flat on the back with the knees bent. Puts much less stress on the low back. But side sleeping ultimately is best. Thank you, Will. As usual, fantastic stuff. I have a summary and links of this and every episode at livefitpodcast.com. This is episode 58. If you enjoyed this show, please share it and subscribe. I have a goal in life of helping 1 million people find fitness and avoid lifestyle diseases. You can help me by spreading the word and sharing this episode with your friends. Also, by subscribing, you will ensure that you have the latest episode ready when you are. 
Additionally, if you found this show valuable, please consider giving $1 per episode. You can find more information at livefitlean.com slash patron. And finally, if you would like to leave a question for Dr. Will or myself, you can go to the show notes page at livefitpodcast.com. You may leave it in writing or verbal question that we can put right on the air. That's all I have for you today. Thank you and live fit. Thank you.